Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, we are looking into the uh, some of the example problem on whatever we have done in this course till now. And in today's class, we have, we have already seen uh, some problems, how to, how to solve some problems in case of ultra filtration, gel layer controlled and osmotic pressure controlled and under uh, you know various conditions, batch, steady state, so on and so forth. In today's class, we will be looking into couple of examples from uh, design of the membrane modules and the dialysis. Okay. The first problem that I have designed today, that is the uh, module design, membrane module design. So, uh, in this problem, uh, we will just write it. Uh, the statement is that water is flowing through a rectangular channel, it is plain water. a rectangular channel of half height is 1 millimeter, this is the half height and width of the channel is 8 centimeter. The inlet flow rate flow rate Q is 40 liter per hour, the inlet transmembrane pressure drop is 500 kilo Pascal. Pressure drop 500 kilo Pascal and it results a constant permeate flux of constant permeate flux of 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter cube per meter square second and the length of the channel is 2 meter. Okay. So, these are the specifications and uh, based on this we are going to calculate some of the things, uh, the first thing we will, we will calculate uh, what is the axial pressure drop in the module, axial pressure drop across the module, okay. the transmembrane pressure drop at the module exit. transmembrane pressure drop at the exit, then we will calculate the fractional recovery of the feed. Because that is very important from the amount that is going into the system, the maximum you will recover in the permeate that will be the that will be better. Fractional recovery of feed and flow rate at the channel exit flow rate at <coughs> channel exit and if we like to recover more uh, uh, feed then what is the length of the module that you, uh, that is required okay if for for a recovery, fractional recovery, of 0 0.92, that means we are very high, then what is the length required, length of the module required? Okay. And what is the, and in that case, what is the actual pressure drop at the exit? axial pressure drop and flow rate at the exit. Now, in, in this problem basically up to uh, question number 4, so the same channel we will like to calculate various quantities and in the last pro problem 
we would like to increase the fractional recovery for that what uh, you have to do the design of the module you have to find out what is the length required for the particular purpose. Now, let us look into the solution and it is in this case this is a pure water and there is no effect of osmotic pressure and things like that. So, the first formulation simplest formulation that whatever we have done for the module design that formulation will hold good. Okay. So, let us write down various quantities half height is 10 to the power minus 3 meter that is 1 millimeter W is 0 0.08 meter delta P at the inlet point is 500 kilo Pascal 5 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square j is the constant flux 2 into 10 to the minus 5 meter cube per meter square second l is 2 meter flow rate at the inlet point is 40 liter per hour and if you change it into meter cube per second this turns out to be 1.111 into 10 to the minus 5 meter cube per second okay now, let us solve the first part. If you look into the expression of delta P axial, the axial pressure drop will be 3 by 2 mu divided by h cube w q i x 1 minus v w times w times x divided by q i. That is the expression for the axial pressure drop just put different values. So, this becomes 3 by 2 10 to the power minus 3 into 1.11 10 to the power minus 5 that is the flow rate. X is the length of the module that is 2 meter and uh, this is h cube is 10 to the power minus 3 cube of that width is 8 centimeter <coughs> 1 minus 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 that is the uh, flux and width is 0 0.08 multiplied by 2 that is the length 1.11 into 10 to the minus 5 that is the flow rate. So, this turns out to be 416.25 into 1 minus 0 0.29. So, this is 296 Pascal. So, the axial pressure drop for this particular system is only uh, is, is about 300 Pascal. Okay. And now, you, you will be able to calculate the different quantities. The second part is the transmembrane pressure drop, transmembrane pressure drop at the exit point, it becomes delta P at the ex exit will be nothing but delta p i minus delta p axial. That means, the initial pressure minus the drop. So, that will be giving the final one. So, this turns out to be 499.7 kilo Pascal. That means, for, a, for this particular module, the, the actual pressure will be really very low. Now, we will see how under what conditions this will be more and uh, things like that. All those interpretations will come. Now, the third part is the fractional recovery of the feed. Of feed in the permeate. Now, if you look into the expression of that, this turns out to be 2 v 2 j w l divided by q i and this turns out to be 2 into 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 into 8 into 10 to the power minus 2 that is the width times length divided by q i is 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, it turns out to be 0.576. So, you will be recovering about 58 percent of the feed in form of the in the form of permeate rest will be the retained rest will go to the retained stream. Okay. Now, you can calculate the uh, flow rate at the channel exit. Flow rate at the let us say module exit 
this becomes the, the expression of uh, cross flow rate becomes q is equal to q i 1 minus 2 j w x divided by 2 q i. Okay. So, this 2 2 will be can, uh, cancelling out. So, that will be the, the amount of uh, permeate at amount of feed that you are withdrawing. So, now at the channel exit, x is equal to L, the length of the channel that is 2 meter. So, q becomes 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 5, 1 minus uh, 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 into 0 0.08 into 2 divided by 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 5 and it turns out to be around 29 liter per hour. Okay. That was the, uh, the permeate flow rate, that is the channel, the, the uh, retained flow rate at the channel exit. Now, let us come down to the uh, design problem. The design problem was that if your fractional recovery was 0 0.92, what will be the length of the uh, module you required? fractional recovery of the feed will be 0.92. So, 2 V w, uh, v w is nothing but the j 2 j w l divided by q i. Uh, for the same flow rate, same channel width suction and etcetera and the suction rate, the length can be calculated now. The length will be 0 0.92 into 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 5 divided by 2 into 2 to the power 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 into 0 0.08 and it turns out to be about 3.2 meter. So, for a 2 meter long module, you are you are recovering about 57 percent of the feed in the in the form of permeate. In case of a, a fractional recovery of 92 percent, you require a larger le, uh, length of the module okay? that, and that turns out to be 3.2 meter for this particular case. And let us look into the axial pressure drop, delta P axial. So, it is the axial pressure drop this becomes just put the values 3 by 2 mu h cube w q i x 1 minus 2 j w x divided by 2 q i okay you put x is equal to l for the throughout the whole module and if you put the number this turns out to be about 360 pascal and if you see this time the actual pressure drop will be higher compared to the earlier case and the flow rate will be flow rate at the channel exit or the module exit will be around 21.6 liter per hour. So, it will be further lower because you are extracting more permeate out of the module. So, the flow will be less. So, these are, these are simple, these are more simpler case for uh, doing a, for designing a module and in the, uh, and in this particular problem we have seen that uh, if you would like to recover more permeate, more feed in the, in the form of permeate then the length has to be length of the module has to be increased. Okay. In the next problem we will see what is the effect of uh, if you reduce the channel height. Okay. Now, in the next problem the problem number 2 for today's problem in, in the above problem that means for problem 1 for problem number 1 if the ch channel height is now reduced to 0 0.5 millimeter. Okay is reduced by half, then you have to find out the axial pressure drop you have to find out the transmembrane pressure drop at the module outlet. fractional recovery of feed
and flow rate at the channel outlet at the module outlet. Okay. Now, in the first case the axial pressure drop you just calculate it delta p axial just putting the numbers in the formula 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 raised to the power 3 into 0 0.08 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 5 into 2 1 minus 0 0.29 okay just put the values in the formula it turns out to be this case 2364.3 pascal that means it is about 2.36 kilo pascal so you see that now you know now we have reduced the channel height the the height of the module and the axial pressure drop has increased tremendously okay so uh, the pressure drop at the outlet can be calculated module outlet this becomes delta p l is nothing but 500 kilo pascal 5 into 10 to the 5 minus uh, 2 3 6 4 point 3 this turns out to be 497 kilo pascal okay so that is the pressure drop that you are going to get at the channel outlet now the fractional recovery now if you look into the uh, definition of fractional recovery there is no uh, channel height does not appear so it remains same okay so channel height rem uh, 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 the fractional re recovery remains same and it, it it remains same as 5.576 as h does not appear in the expression okay similarly the flow rate will, will remain unchanged and it uh, flow rate at the ch at the module outlet it remains unchanged and it remains same value 28.5 liter per hour okay so if you decrease or increase the height of the channel and maintain the other uh, other quantities uh, almost invariant then what it will be it will manifest it will be manifest that effect will be manifested into the pressure drop okay so 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 you can you can uh, design your module accordingly whether you require higher pressure drop axial pressure drop or low axial pressure drop how to control it how easy or how difficult to control these parameters okay now in the next problem we'll see that uh, this, this is not a uh, this is a little bit complicated one and but in this case we'll we'll, we'll do the um, assumption that osmotic pressure is um, uh, negligible compared to the transmembrane pressure drop then only you can do the analytical solution otherwise you have to do numerically okay so next problem will be doing a module design for an ultra filtration process in this case a, we consider a protein solution the concentration fit concentration is given as 0.2 kg per meter cube okay it has to be concentrated by ultra filtration this protein solution solution has to be concentrated by uf uh, the operating conditions are like this at the channel entrance delta pi is 500 kilo pascal 5 into 10 to the power 5 pascal that is the transmembrane pressure drop at the channel entrance w is the width of the channel and this is same as 8 centimeter or 0 0.08 meter and the channel half height is let us say 1 millimeter so this becomes 10 to the power minus 3 meter the membrane permeability is given as 10 to the power minus 11 newton second per meter square so this basically um, uh, in the, is in the order of 10 to the minus 11 it may be 2 into 10 to the minus 11 or 3 into 10 to the minus 11 for this particular problem let us have it is in the order of 10 to the minus 11 the feed flow rate that is at the channel entrance is qi is 40 liter per hour and the channel length is 2 meter okay and we neglect the osmotic pressure of the protein solution it is high molecular weight protein so osmotic pressure of protein solution compared to 
the transmembrane pressure drop. Okay. So, negligible osmotic pressure compared to transmembrane pressure drop. Okay. Now, let us see what we have to calculate. We have to find out the pressure drop across the channel, across the module. Okay. We have to find out the fractional recovery of the feed. velocity and concentration at the channel exit. At the channel exit. Okay, so, we have different quantities delta p i is 5 into 10 to the 5 Pascal, width is 0 0.08 meter, height is half height is 10 to the minus 3 meter, membrane permeability is given, Q e at the inlet point is given as 40 liter per hour, it turns out to be 1.11 into 10 to the minus 5 meter cube per second. So, you can find out what is the uh, velocity at the, uh, the, the cross section average velocity at the entrance of the channel or the module, this becomes Q by 2 H W that will be the area of cross section of the flow and it turns out to be 0 0.07 meter per second. Okay. Now, in this case we, have, we are assuming that uh, uh, osmotic pressure is negligibly small. So, therefore, uh, permeate flux is proportional to transmembrane pressure drop at any point of time because delta p minus delta pi the pi is negligibly small. So, we will go to the second formulation of our mem uh, membrane module design and uh, we will calculate accordingly. So, therefore, we have to calculate the value of lambda there, if you remember that was 3 mu L p over H cube, mu is the viscosity of uh, viscosity of water, protein solution, let us say it is same as water viscosity that is 10 to the minus 3 Pascal second, L p is given as in the order of 10 to the minus 11, this will be in the order of 10, this is uh, H cube 10 to the minus 9. So, it turns out to be 5.48 into 10 to the power minus 3. Then there is another parameter beta, we have to calculate that, that is 3 by 2 mu q i, that is the inlet flow rate, h cube w lambda delta p at the inlet point and this turns out to be, this 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 5 divided by 10 to the power minus 9 into 0.08 the value of lambda is 5.48 into 10 to the power minus 3 and delta p i is 5 into 10 to the power 5 and it turns out to be 0 0.076. So, lambda l you have to find out, lambda l turns out to be 0 0.011 and uh, sin h lambda l and cos h lambda l are uh, you, you, would, you would like to calculate, you utilize. So, this turns out to be 0 0.011 and cos h lambda l turns out to be 1. Okay. So, by computing all these quantities you know all the parameters, now you have to put them in the formula. Okay. First calculation is pressure drop, initial pressure drop if you look into the definition of that delta p at the length l divided by delta p at the entrance point is not, nothing but cos h lambda l minus beta sin h lambda l and it turns out to be 0 0.999. So, it, it is negligibly small and the transmembrane pressure drop at the outlet will be 499.50 kilo Pascal okay? and delta p axial the axial pressure drop will turn out to be around 500 Pascal only. So, it is really very small okay? uh, for, for, a, for a channel of length 
2 meter and for that particular half height. Next, we calculate the fractional feed recovery. in the form of permeate, the formula was 2 w that is the width of the channel multiplied by L p delta p divided by q i lambda sin h lambda L minus beta cos h lambda L minus 1. Okay. So, this is delta p at the entrance, entrance point is delta p i and if you put all these values it turns out to be 0 0.147. That means, in this particular problem you are recovering only 14 percent or about only 15 percent of the feed in the form of permeate. That may not be feasible, so you have to change the parameters for example, uh, channel half height or width or, or, or other parameters design parameters to increase the fractional feed recovery. In fact, you can you can set the fractional feed recovery about 90 percent or 85 percent and back calculate what will be the dimension of the channel and design appropriately. Okay. Now, third third problem was velocity at the outlet. It was u bar at length L divided by cross sectional average velocity at the inlet 1 minus L p delta p i divided by h lambda u naught sin h lambda L minus beta times cos h lambda L minus 1 bracket close. So, if you put all the values, it turns out to be 10 to the power minus 11 into 5 into 10 to the power 5, that is the transmembrane pressure drop at the entrance point, h is 10 to the power minus 3, lambda 5.85 into 10 to the power minus 3, u naught 0 0.07, and this turns out to be 0 0.011, okay, and it is 0.86. So, u bar at length uh, L at the module exit will be 0 0.06 meter per second. So, there is 14 percent loss in the cross flow velocity because the uh, rest rest amount of uh, feed uh, because the feed you are extracting out of it. So, the velocity has decreased. Okay. So, uh, about 14 percent loss in the velocity compared to the inlet of the module. Next is concentration at the outlet. of protein at the outlet. So, C L divided by C naught is inverse of the previous problem U 0 divided by U at L, so it is 1 over 0 0.86, this turns out to be 1.16. So, C at L turns out to be 0 0.232 kg per meter cube. Okay. So, in this particular problem, for this module, for this particular modules, its dimensions and the operating conditions, you are only concentrating it only by 16 percent from from uh, uh, C by C naught or is about 1.16. Now, if you would like to increase, if you would like to concentrate it more, say let us say 2 times, 3 times, 4 times, it is just 1.16 times, you can design your module appropriately. You can, you can find what will be the length, what will be the width, what will be the height and what will be the operating, you can, you can tinker with the operating conditions as well, that you can say that my inlet transmembrane pressure drop will be, will be such, so that I can increase the concentration at the outlet by two fold or by three fold. So, I am just, uh, I have just selected some of the you know, typical numbers to give you a feel, an idea how to do the calculations and what will be the, for, for some, some, some typical values, what will be the final results you are going to obtain. So, if you would like to require that you would like to concentrate the protein by two folds, right? then in, in that case you will put C by C at the outlet divided by C naught is equal to 2 or 3 is three folds concentration. concentration. Then according to that you can, you can design your modules, uh, you can select your uh, design parameters or the operating conditions. So, there are two things only design parameters and the operating conditions and of course, the fluid properties, okay. but that is 
fixed once you have selected your fluid that you are working with a protein solution or you are working with the effluent. Okay. So, that is fixed. So, based on the requirement one can fine tune or design the uh, uh, geometric parameters of the module as well as the operating condition to uh, achieve the goal that you are setting for. Okay. So, next uh, set of problem uh, I am just uh, select I have selected for the uh, dialysis one and <coughs> this is a design of a counter current dialyzer. And this problem is a uh, this problem has been very carefully selected, and here we have we have uh, I have shown you that um, we will be doing the uh, one dimensional model calculation. For example, using the uh, log mean concentration difference idea, we will be doing the design. Okay. Now this problem is selected such that in one case we have selected that uh, the um, uh, the so there are three resistances as we have discussed earlier. One is the resistance in the feed side and there is the resistance within the membrane and there is the resistance in the dialysate side. Typically, uh, if the flow rate in the feed side and the dialysate side if, uh, are, are quite high, you can neglect those resistances. So, the main resistance will be the, uh, the membrane resistance. Okay. So, first we will do the calculation and, and find out the area required for getting a particular you know uh, separation that I, I am coming to the problem in uh, elaborately. Uh, if you consider membrane resistance only, then what will be the area that is that will be required. Now, typically the feed, feed flow rate is two times or three times lower than the dialyzed flow rate to have the uh, better efficiency. Now, if you call if you consider resistance of membrane membrane as well as the feed flow rate, feed, resi feed side resistance, then what will be the area, membrane area that you are going to get for a particular you know uh, separation of the dialysis process. The third case, this case 1, this case 2, this case 3, in the third case we have considered that including membrane resistance. You include feed side resistance as well as the dialyzed side resistance and see what membrane area you are going to get. The common sense says that the if you include this resistance only, the area that you are going to get will be the minimum here. So, this is A m 1, in this case this is A m 2 and in this case this is the A m 3, the membrane area in this third case. And we, 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 are, we are supposed to get A m 1 is less than A m 2 is less than A m 3 in that order. Okay. Now, what will be the area and uh, order of magnitude of the area that we will see later on. Now, so basically for an actual dialysis case, you should consider all the three resistances intact, but what happens if you neglect one of them, if you neglect two of them, if you include all of them. Okay. So, let us look for uh, let us now let us come down to the problem. Uh, it is a steady state dialyzer. Steady state counter current uh, counter current dialyzer of cross section rectangular. That means, you are, you, you are having a small channel, rectangular channel, then you say, say, uh, say put the membrane and then another rectangular channel. So, two rectangular channels are separated by a dialysis membrane. In one channel, you are, you are passing the feed and in the other channel, you are passing the dialyzer in the opposite direction. So, that forms the counter current dialyzer and the membrane area will be nothing but the height of the channel multiplied by the length of the module. Okay, that will be the membrane area and the uh, cross section area of the flow will be the width of the channel multiplied by the height of the membrane or height of the module. Okay. So, that will, uh, formula, that will uh, um, uh, give you the cross section area normal to the flow 
and length of the module multiplied by the height of the module uh, membrane or module will give you the area of the membrane. Okay. Now, in this case urea is separated is removed by pure water as dialyzed okay. and inlet feed concentration of urea is 1500 milligram per liter okay. the feed flow rate is given as 18 liter per hour dialyzed flow rate is 5 times of that let us say 90 liter per hour uh, diffusivity of urea diffusivity of urea in bulk solution is given as 10 to the power minus 10 meter square per second and diffusivity of urea in the membrane is two orders of magnitude less that will be in the order of 10 to the minus 12 meter square per second. Okay. Uh, membrane thickness one micron 10 to the power minus 6 meter uh, feed and dialyzer chambers are identical they are the channel width is 5 millimeter and full height is 5 millimeter, 5 millimeter height, 5 millimeter width both the channels. In the feed side the urea concentration has to be reduced from 500 to 300 milligram per liter. From 1500 at the inlet to 300 milligram per liter at the outlet. Now, we have to find out the membrane area required for this particular problem. Okay. Uh, now, we just draw the schematic diagram of the counter current dialyzer C i f i is the feet of urea that is going into system a feed chamber is 1500 milligram per liter C i f e that is the urea that is going out should be 300 milligram per liter. So, you are going to reduce from 1500 to 300 milligram per liter. It is the C i d i will be equal to 0 because it is pure distilled water, C i d outlet will be something that we are going to find out. Okay. So, uh, V f dot is 18 liter per hour that is the flow rate of the feed, flow rate in the dialysate side is 90 liter per hour, d i m is 10 to the power minus 12 meter square per second that is the urea diffusivity in the membrane phase, d i will be 10 to the power minus 10 meter square per second. Uh, thickness of thickness of uh, membrane membrane thickness we called it as L probably does not matter. Uh, so, is thickness 10 to the power minus 6 meter 1 micron and W and height both are 5 millimeter C i d i will be equal to 0. Okay. So, 
what the first first step what we will be doing we have to calculate the log mean concentration difference in order to calculate the log mean concentration difference you require to know what is the value of cid not so that can be calculated using an overall urea balance in the system the amount that is urea going into the system so the amount of urea that is being lost in the feed chamber should be gained by the dialyzed chamber okay so m dot is a urea rate of urea transport urea transport rate and this will be nothing but uh, urea transport rate means from the uh, feed chamber to the dialyzed chamber through the membrane okay so this will be nothing but vf dot into ci fi minus ci f fe is equal to vd dot ci do minus ci d in okay so this is the amount of urea lost in the feed chamber is equal to the amount of urea that is gained in the dialysis chamber so if you do that you will be getting 18 into 1500 minus 300 is equal to 90 cid not minus 0 and uh, cid not turns out to be 240 milligram per liter okay so the outlet concentration in the dialysate will be will be containing 200 milligram per liter urea at the steady state now we will solve the case 1 okay so so ci d not in this particular case will be 240 milligram per liter that we have calculated now you, you will be in a, because you all the four uh, uh, you know concentrations are known at the four entry uh, two entry points and two exit points you will be in a position to calculate the log mean concentration difference okay so one delta c1 will be uh, uh, will, will be uh, 300 minus 0 and a delta c2 will be 1500 minus 240 okay based on that you can calculate the log mean concentration difference right it is exactly same as log mean temperature difference in case of heat transfer okay so case number 1 we neglect the mass transfer resistance on both sides the only resistance is membrane resistance prevails okay so you can calculate that now k0 the overall mass transfer resistance mass transfer coefficient it is inverse of the overall mass transfer resistance coefficient it turns out to be dim divided by the thickness of the membrane and this will be 10 to the power minus 12 divided by 10 to the power minus 6 so it will be 10 to the power minus 6 meter per second okay now you will be you calculate the delta c lm td we, we write it lm td it should be lm cd basically the idea is same uh, this is delta c1 minus delta c delta c1 minus delta c out divided by ln delta c1 delta c out so it will be delta c1 will be uh, 1500 minus 240 so this turns out to be 1260 milligram per liter and delta c2 will be uh, 300 minus 0 that is 300 milligram per liter so it is at the inlet point of the feed these are the outlet point of the feed the temper concentration difference at the inlet point of the feed and this is the uh, concentration difference at the exit point okay so you will be in a position to calculate delta c lm we should call it lmcd but anyway since we have uh, it, 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 we know the meaning of it 
1260 minus 300 divided by ln 1260 divided by 300. It turns out to be 668.95 milligram per liter. So, the log mean concentration difference for the full dialyzer module it turns out to be 668.95 milligram per liter and you can calculate the uh, mass transport rate of urea. rate of urea across the membrane, how much urea has been transported across the membrane, the amount of urea that has been lost in the feed chamber, right. So, it will be nothing but V f dot times C i f i minus C i f e. The amount of urea that is lost in the feed chamber must have been transported to the other side at the steady state. So, it will be 18 liter per hour multiplied by 1200 milligram per liter. So, you can convert it uh, into you know, so it, uh, it turns out to be 21.6 gram per hour. So, you can you can calculate it and find it out, you can convert the in a unit and uh, uh, it is 21.6 gram per hour. Okay. Now, this mass transport rate of urea can be re, can be written in terms of uh, overall mass transfer coefficient okay so this is nothing but k0 am times delta c lmtd right if you remember so these two will be will be equated so what is k k0 k0 will be 10 to the power minus 6 these am and delta c lmtd uh, is 668.5 milligram per liter. Okay. Now, there is a unit problem here k naught is in k meter per second, this is in meter square and uh, mm, uh, this will be in milligram per liter. You convert into appropriate unit and uh, this turns out to be in fact, milligram per liter will be nothing but uh, 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 you know um, okay. So, if, if, if you multiply it I think if you multiply it by 3600 uh, this it, then it turns out to be gram per hour okay that is the unit conversion so meter cube meter cube and liter will be cancelled out okay if you if you if you con if convert liter into meter cube and milligram can be converted into gram and this if you uh, multiply both side by uh, multiply and divide by 3600 that uh, second will be converted into hour. So, it will be in the form of gram per hour. So, it turns out to be 2.41 times a m the unit will be gram per hour. So, you should be very careful about the unit. So, now we will be equating the uh, amount uh, urea transported Mm, uh, uh, by by dip depletion amount depleted in the feed chamber that is 21.6 gram per hour with this. So, this will be 2.41 am times 20 is equal to 21.6 and area of the membrane will be nothing but 8.96 meter square. So, it will be around 9 meter square. So, given the dimension of the uh, given the dimension of the uh, channel and the operating condition, the specification, the amount of urea that has to be you know that is going into the system and the amount has to be removed. If you would like to design a membrane uh, dialyzer, you have to supply a membrane area of about 9 meter square, then you will be realizing those uh, you know uh, targets that you are going to set. In the case number 2, we will be considering the dialyzate site we neglect the dialyzate site mass transfer coefficient resistance neglect dialyzate site mass transfer resistance and include feed site resistance and see what you get and, and and calculate the membrane area for this particular perform uh, you know um, uh, performance of the dialyzer so vf dot will be 18 liter per hour 
and your W and height will be 5 millimeter each. So, area of cross section normal to the flow will be nothing but the W times full height that is 5 into 5. So, 25 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter square. Okay. So, uh, uf the velocity the cross sectional average velocity in the fit chamber will be 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 25 into 10 to the power minus 6. Uh, this 5 into 10 to the minus 6 is basically if, if you convert 18 liter per hour into meter cube per second, this turns out to be 18 liter per hour is equal to 5 into 10 to the minus 6 meter cube per second. So, meter cube per second divided by meter square. So, the velocity in the fit chamber will be getting it will, it will be getting uh, as 0 0.2 meter per second. Now, equivalent diameter you calculate the Reynolds number. Once you calculate the Reynolds number based on the value of the Reynolds number, you have to select the appropriate mass transfer coefficient or uh, by selecting appropriate relationship for Sherwood number. So, equivalent diameter will be 4 into half height, so 2 times full height, right. So, it will be 10 millimeter, it will be 10 to the power minus 2 meter, okay. So, Reynolds number you can calculate in the fit chamber as uf d by rho u f d by mu, you take density of water 10 cube, density of uh, viscosity of water as 10 to the power minus 3, u f is 0 0.2 and d equivalent is 10 to the power minus 2, it turns out to be 2000. So, this is less than 2200, so it is a laminar flow. Okay. Now, if it is a laminar flow, you can calculate the Sherwood number from this relationship k d e by d is equal to 1.85 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 and k we put the velocity. Uh, so, k, so, k f will be 1.85 u f d square divided by d times l raised to the power 1 upon 3 and if you put all the values, you do not know the length of the module. So, it turns out to be 1.08 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by L to the power 1 upon 3, L is not known. Now, you are in a position to calculate the overall mass transfer coefficient and in this case, it will be 1 over k f plus L over L means thickness over d i m, thickness of the memory by d i m. So, if you put all the values, it turns out to be L to the power 1 upon 3, 1.08 into 10 to the power minus 6 plus 1 over 10 to the power minus 6 and this will be 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 1 plus 0 0.93 L to the power 1 upon 3. So, that is the value of overall mass transfer coefficient in this particular case. So, you have already calculated that m dot is 21.6 gram per hour and now you can calculate m dot from the definition of overall mass transfer coefficient as a m delta c l m t d. So, it turns out to be 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 1 plus 0 0.93 L to the power 1 upon 3 AM 668.95 into 3600 and this unit will be gram per hour. Now, AM, what is AM? AM will be the full height multiplied by the length of the membrane, right. So, L if you L can be replaced in form of in, in terms of total membrane area. So, L will be nothing but 200 times A m. So, if you put that, so this turns out to be 2.41 times A m divided by 1 plus 5.44 A m to the power 1 upon 3. Now, we equate this with this. So, it becomes 2.41 A m 1 plus 5.44 a m to the power 1 upon 3 is equal to 21.6 and from this basically you can you can uh, this this quantity will be pretty large you can neglect one with respect to that and you can get direct solution of a m okay and a m turns out to be 341 meter square in this particular problem so you see if you neglect the mass transfer resistance of the fit side the membrane area required is around 9 meter square, but if you include the mass transfer resistance of the fit side, it will be it shooting up to 340 meter square. So, 
inclusion of all the resistance will be very important because the feed side, uh, uh, feed side is in the laminar flow. So, mass transfer resistance will be significant. If you neglect that, then you will be, you will be underestimating the whole problem. Okay? Now, in the second case, we will be considering both side resistances. The third case, consider resistances on both sides. Okay? So, you can, you can calculate the velocity in the dialyzed side. This turns out to be 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter cube per second and uh, dialysate side velocity will be 1 meter per second and the Reynolds number in this particular problem turns out to be 10,000. Okay. So, it is in the turbulent. So, we are, I have selected the problem such that in one case it will be laminar flow, in another side it will be turbulent flow. So, you will, you will be, you will be leading, re requiring the Sherwood number relationship as the Dietz Volter 1 0 0.023 Reynolds to the power 0 0.8 and Smith to the power 0.33. The calculation is straightforward and the K D turns out to be 7.616 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter per second for this particular case. So, there is no L there. So, you can calculate the Reynolds number, Smith number etcetera and it turns out to be this. Now, your overall mass transfer coefficient will be 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 1.131 plus 0.93 to the power into L to the power 1 upon 3 in this particular problem. Now, if you equate the 21.6 gram per hour to K0 AM delta C LMTD and you know simplify this thing, the final expression that you will be getting is AM divided by 1.131 plus 5.44 AM to the power 1 upon 3 is equal to 8.96. So, by you can do a trial and error solution. Trial and error solution gives you A m as 355 meter square. So, you are getting first 9 meter square, then you are getting 340 meter square, then now you are getting 355 meter square. So, if you go on increasing the resistances, the area required for the um, uh, um, dialyzer module will, be, will keep on increasing. So, although there is not much difference between these two areas because the uh, you know dialyzed site uh, um, uh, flow rate is really in the turbulent conditions and the resistance will be less and mass transfer coefficient will be pretty high. On the other hand, if you include, uh, if you do not include the any of the feed site or dialyzed site resistance, you will be really under predicting the design. So, you have to consider all the resistances at least the feed side resistance to get a realistic picture or estimate of the membrane design. Okay? Thank you very much. Now, in the next class, we will be uh, moving on to another topic. Okay?